Good morning, King George County Schools. It's Friday, August 18th, and this is the end of our first full week of school, Monday through Friday. I think it's been a very good week, and I'd like to most certainly start with some good news. So if you were able to see the Freelance Star yesterday, there was a story in there that read, King George Schools Selected for Phase 2 of Federal Contest. So one of our goals in our strategic plan is quality instruction and innovation. And within that goal, you'll see a lot of mentions uh, or, or a lot of uh, strategies mentioned that uh, talk about integrating authentic real-world experiences in our curriculum, talks about expanding our CTE program and our vocational offerings. And I'm happy to report that our this announcement uh, puts King George County Schools in one of 100 schools across the entire nation that was chosen for the Career Z Challenge, which is uh, a challenge brought forth by the U.S. Department of Education, uh, and it really puts us in phase two. So it uh, already has awarded us $10,000 so that we can implement our uh, Fox's Academy. Please read the article, and it'll tell you more about that. And uh, it really puts us in the running for a $2.5 uh, $2 million federal uh, prize. So it is very exciting. Uh, we're moving in the right directions in King George County Schools, and uh, we are so appreciative of the folks that uh, did the legwork to get this done. So that's the wonderful news that uh, I'd like to share with you this morning. Secondly, um, as we begin to start schools uh, all across the Commonwealth, all 132 school divisions across the Commonwealth begin to open up again. Uh, just like clockwork, if you turn on the news, you start to see uh, stories about uh, challenging uh, subjects that, that many school divisions are dealing with. And uh, I felt compelled, not only have I been thinking about this a lot, but compelled to kind of relate to our community the approach that we've taken in King George. Uh, King George County Schools approach is one that attempts to put parents in the position to make decisions they feel are most beneficial for their child. Uh, we realize that everyone doesn't share the same views when it comes to library books, when it comes to instructional materials, when it comes to other uh, challenging issues that we're dealing with in society right now. Therefore, our hope and our approach is twofold. Uh, it's one that puts parents in the driver's seat, uh, and I'll describe some of those tools that we have that um, empower parents to make decisions for their child. Uh, and number two, and I think most importantly, it, it alleviates our children from many of the distractions you see uh, on the news and, and many other school divisions. And with all due respect uh, to those other school divisions, our focus, I believe, has to remain in King George County schools um, our, towards our students. We need to make sure that we limit those distractions and we allow them to focus on their main priority and the main goal of, of getting an education. We all know we're still coming off of... Um, an interesting experience for, for us all, 18 months where our children uh, did not have access to a classroom and, and were trying to learn virtually uh, in their houses. And just because of that reason alone, uh, these students have had an experience that is unlike my education, unlike really uh, any other education in the generations before us. So we are more so compelled right now to make sure that we uh, continue to push forward as best we can without distraction on making sure our kids get the best uh, opportunity they can for, for a quality education. So again, those two facets are what we focus on. Number one, empowering parents, uh, and that comes with a partnership. We need to make sure that uh, between the home and the school, that there's open lines of communication, that there's full transparency, that there's a dialogue that exists. If, if those things are part of the equation, then we know from research, from experience, and from everything else that the child uh, succeeds, that that is the best possible um, recipe for the success of the child. So with that being said, I want to just kind of talk to you a little bit about some of the things that we have in place uh, in King George County Schools. So first, if you remember last year, uh, we talked about and wrestled with our instructional materials policy. That policy is IIA in our, in our uh, policy manual. And really what that policy says is that parents uh, have the ability to take a look through either a syllabus or a newsletter or whatever uh, teachers are sending home, take a look at all the materials used in the class, the, the novels, the books, the instructional materials, 
And if you feel uncomfortable with some of that content, uh, then there is a clause on that syllabus that says, you just reach out to the teacher, I'm uncomfortable with this content, and the teacher will make arrangements for an alternative assignment uh, that covers those same SOLs or that same material. Uh, we worked through that policy last year, and I, I think we're in the right place right now because where we are is one that, like I said, empowers parents to make decisions about their child's education, um, but also limits the disruption associated with some of the other strategies or tactics you really kind of see across the state. So moving forward now as we begin the school year, library books are a conversation across the Commonwealth. So we've taken the same approach. Right now, uh, we have a form available. It's on our, 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 our library websites, on each respective school's library websites. And if you navigate to those websites, you will see an opt-out form. So if by chance at all, um, you are concerned about any of the uh, library books that are in circulation. Number one, those entire uh, book catalogs are available online. It's through Follett, uh, and you can navigate to our uh, entire circulation catalog online and see every book that we have available in King George County Schools. I think I've, I've been told the estimates are somewhere in the ballpark of like 15,000 books we have available to our students. That's quite a bit of books. Uh, those are available on an online database. And if for any reason um, there are uh, titles, books, any things of that nature that um, you're not comfortable with, you don't think your child's comfortable with, there is an opt-out form. So you can uh, just simply send that back into the school, and we'll make sure we make arrangements so that uh, those books uh, in circulation are not available uh, to your child. Uh, we will continue to have the Ask the Superintendent uh, on, on our webpage. If you have questions, if you have concerns, please continue to just log on, click that link, and uh, ask me a question. And it, your question may be others' questions as well, so uh, I don't mind making a video and seeing what I can do to address it, the, the concerns that you have and maybe others have as well. Uh, we do have a policy, KLB. And a, uh, and a form KLB-E on our website under the policy manual uh, that describes a, a, a formal policy for anyone that um, is concerned about a particular learning resource. So again, all of these are approaches and methods where we try to establish this dialogue uh, between the parents and the school uh, so that it's open lines of communication. Um, on the front end of that, as I mentioned before, we're trying to be as open as, and transparent as possible when it comes to letting you know what uh, instructional materials are, are being used in the classroom through the syllabus or through a newsletter by our teachers, uh, through our online uh, Follett library circulation catalog. Uh, we're really hoping and trying to make sure that you know what's going on in the schools and making sure that parents are in the driver's seat of their child's education. So. Uh, we'll continue to push forward with that effort, making sure that um, we meet those two goals uh, in theory that uh, I described on the front end of this. And, and those are, number one, uh, making sure that parents are in the driver's seat and they are partners with the school division. And number two, we laser-like focus on our child's education. We know that they are behind. Learning loss is a real thing after the 18-month uh, layoff. And we would need and we must make sure that we minimize the distractions for our students and give them every opportunity they have uh, to get an education they deserve. So I appreciate uh, everybody's questions. Please keep them coming. Uh, I want to remind you guys, as I mentioned before, the relationship between the school division and the home is um, a very important part of your child's success. Uh, if you do have questions, please reach directly out to the school. I know Facebook is out there and I know it's entertaining, but folks, it's not going to be the best place for you to find the answers that you need. I, I kind of use this hierarchy to, to uh, when I speak with uh, folks in the community. If you have an issue that's related to a particular classroom, reach out to the teacher. If you have an issue that's related specifically to the school, reach out to the school administration. And then if you have an issue related to the school division, reach out to me. I'm an email away. I'm a phone call away. You can certainly go online and ask the superintendent. And uh, we're here for you. We want to make sure that this school year is a successful one for you and for our students. 
Uh, so we're trying everything we possibly can in that effort. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful week, and we look forward to an, an, another uh, amazing week of school here in King George County Schools. Thank you so much.